Ever wondered how people survived icy medieval winters without modern comforts? Greetings everyone! Today, we're diving into the chilling reality of medieval Europe's winters. Imagine a world without gloves, scarves, or heating systems, where people faced the brutal cold head-on. We'll explore how the inhabitants of medieval Europe, particularly during the Little Ice Age, coped with freezing temperatures and the impact it had on their daily lives. If you find this video interesting, please support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. Are there indispensable items for a cold winter? Gloves, scarves, hand warmers, heating systems. Modern humans have developed various technologies that help us through winter. But how did people cope with winter in the times before these conveniences existed? Centuries ago, in medieval Europe, countries experienced such cold winters that snow piled up and rivers froze. Looking into their lives, we see a harsh icy world and the incredible struggles of the people living through it. By the end of this video, you might feel grateful for the heating in your room. First, let's briefly discuss the medieval European winter. During the medieval period, Europe underwent significant climatic changes. From around 950 to 1250, Western Europe experienced the medieval warm period, known for its relatively comfortable climate. Consequently, winters during this period were not very harsh, and snowfall was minimal. Such an environment made it easier to harvest crops, and the population in Northern Europe significantly increased as the medieval warm period began. Even Scotland, known today for its harsh climate, had a mild enough climate during this period to cultivate grapes for wine. Hearing this, you might think medieval winters were easy, but the real problem came later. At the beginning of the 14th century, signs of the Little Ice Age began to appear in Europe. Lasting from around 1300 to 1870, with the coldest period between 1550 and 1700, this era brought significant challenges. In this video, we will explore life during the Little Ice Age. The winters of the Little Ice Age caused extensive damage in Europe. For example, the Norse colonies in Greenland faced crop failures and harsh winters. Making livestock maintenance impossible, leading to their disappearance due to famine in the early 15th century. In Iceland, heavy snowfalls led to the closure of ports, resulting in a population decline by half. Freezing of seas and lakes was a common problem throughout Europe, severely affecting people's lives. In Germany, the Rhine River froze for over 70 days, and Belgian towns were covered in snow for more than 100 days. Hubert Horace Lamb, a climatologist who studied climate change during the Little Ice Age, noted that many cities had far more snowfall and longer-lasting snow than in previous records and even in modern times. So, how did this harsh climate affect human life? One of the most significant impacts was on food, with longer periods of low temperatures compared to the medieval warm period. The cultivation methods for rice and vegetables, suited to warmer climates, became ineffective. Consequently, crop cultivation methods across Europe had to change to adapt to the longer winter periods. However, changing cultivation methods was not easy, leading to frequent famines, and many people died during winter. For instance, it's estimated that about 10% of the population in France between 1693 to 1694 and in Norway and Sweden between 1695 to 1696. About 20% in Estonia after 1696, and about 30% in Finland perished. Additionally, heavy snowfall caused significant damage. In February 1352 in Florence, Italy, snow fell continuously for a month, and about 18 feet of snow accumulated in Bologna. In 1359 in central Italy, snow piled up to abnormal heights, blocking roads when people tried to clear their roofs trapping residents in their homes for days. Such harsh climates had varied impacts, but for many people living in mainland Europe. Surviving the winter was extremely difficult, and the fear of winter was tremendous. This fear manifested in various ways. For instance, during the Little Ice Age, even in summer, temperatures often did not rise enough, leading to poor harvests of grains and vegetables. In such cases, witchcraft was blamed, and witch hunts became prevalent before winter. Thus, winter came to symbolize poverty and death in the medieval mindset. To dispel these negative perceptions of winter, 
A custom emerged among medieval peasants at the beginning of winter, they sowed wheat on half of their land. This practice was believed to encourage the wheat to sprout before the cold set in and to grow vigorously in the spring. As we have seen, the Little Ice Age in Europe was far colder than today, and there were no modern conveniences to alleviate the cold. Let's take a look at how people lived in these conditions. For example, what were medieval castles like? Many castles built in the medieval era were made of stone, which offered high resistance to leaks and collapses due to rain or snow. However, with few rooms having fireplaces and large room sizes, the cold was a serious problem. Portable braziers were used for warmth, but they lacked safety, leading to many fires and accidents. Drafts were also a significant issue, making the living conditions in these castles unimaginably poor by modern standards. Glass was highly valued in these circumstances. Using glass significantly reduced the drafts that had previously troubled people, somewhat improving living conditions. For example, in the 1230s, some windows in London's Westminster Palace were glazed. However, at that time, window glass was very expensive and only accessible to a limited few. Those who could not afford glass used alternatives like mortar or paper. In fact, records show that during winter, the windows of the cathedral on Maguelon Island in southern France were sealed with mortar. Such extreme measures indicate the severity of the cold at that time. In addition to fireplaces in castles and hearths in citizens' homes, Families huddled together around a central fire pit for warmth, sharing body heat as they slept. Although the smoke was vented through a hole in the roof, the houses were still filled with smoke, creating a difficult living environment. However, this smoke acted as a natural deodorizer, reducing the smell of clothes and body odor. As for winter essentials like hand warmers we have today, similar alternatives existed back then. Instead of convenient hand warmers, people heated bricks or stones in fireplaces and wrapped them in cloth, or used iron containers filled with coal for warmth. These methods were risky and could easily lead to severe burns. Now, let's also introduce the clothing of the time. As mentioned, the winters of the Little Ice Age were extremely harsh. Therefore, even indoors, many people wore cloaks, scarves, boots, and gloves during winter. The habit of wearing nightcaps to bed, common in the Middle Ages, is also believed to have originated from the cold of the Little Ice Age. Regarding the clothing of the peasants, they made winter clothes from the fur and wool of the animals they raised. Wool was itchy and uncomfortable, so it was worn over linen garments. While fur conjures images of luxury, the fur used in peasants' clothing likely came from rabbits and lambs, which were more readily available to them. Collecting the skins of small animals to make warmer clothes was one way peasants prepared for the harsh winters. Thus, medieval people used various ingenious methods to survive the extreme cold. However, the hardships faced by medieval peasants were not only due to the harsh cold of the Little Ice Age but also the human social environment of the time. In those days, Europe was a feudal society where clothing was strictly regulated based on social status. For example, in England in 1363, rules stipulated that the wives and daughters of craftsmen and landowning peasants could only wear fur from lambs, rabbits, cats, and foxes. Thus, people at the time were oppressed by both the harshness of nature and human rules. They lived in houses with hearths, wore fur clothes while mindful of regulations. And what kind of food did they eat? Let's discuss the food situation of the time. For peasants, the shortage of food in winter was a serious issue. To prepare for winter, they fattened their pigs with acorns before slaughtering them for winter food. The processing of pigs involved a collective effort, from collecting blood to handling the innards. Once the butchering was done, the meat was salted or turned into cured meats like ham. And the blood was used to make blood sausages or black pudding, ensuring no waste. Besides meat, Various crops harvested in the fall were stored, and the main winter food for peasants was a stew made from boiled vegetables and grains. These foods helped them survive the harsh winters. Of course, winter was not a time of inactivity. Daily necessities like chopping wood, harvesting winter crops like cabbage and leeks, pruning old trees and planting new grapevines, repairing buildings and agricultural tools, and caring for livestock meant a lot of work. With limited food and numerous tasks to perform in the cold, 
It's understandable why winter came to symbolize poverty and death. Did you know that the Little Ice Age might be relevant to us today? According to a 2015 study published in a scientific journal by a professor at Northumbria University in the UK, solar activity is expected to decrease by 60% in the 2030s, causing a rapid drop in Earth's temperature and potentially bringing a new Little Ice Age that could last for 370 years. Is this really true? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.